Energy Operation Warp Speed. It's the name our next guest has given to a vision he's introduced uh, to the Senate on creating a global Russia-free energy future. Join us now, Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy. Um, I guess we might hear a little bit different um, view on, on some of these issues. Were, were you able to hear most of that interview, Senator, or did you just join us? I thought it was a great interview. I thought your questions were very good. By the way, there's a lot of commonality between the, what the two of us might say. Uh, there will be a transition, but I, what I would emphasize is that IEA estimates that there will be increased use of oil and natural gas worldwide through 2050. Now, if you're speaking of a transition where in 25 years you don't need oil and gas, you don't know how to make plastic. Um, you're not aware that many folks around the world will not have the access to the critical minerals. Uh, so, But on the other hand, the point you all made there is a nexus between energy, climate, economy, and national security. And right now, we're losing all four because we've not paid attention to all four. Senator, the executive order the Biden, the Biden administration introduced on January 27th, for, for two or three years, or not, not ESG has been around two or three years, and they would proudly point to the, uh, the fall off in financing towards fossil fuel development and that we need to leave these things in the ground and that was a they, they were kind of happy that that they were succeeding and now at this point i'm hearing that no no nothing was ever done it had to do with the shale drop off in 2004 the pandemic shut down the drilling and uh you know in in 2020 uh which is it were we were we trying to cut off financing? We had a fit, we had a Fed official that, that stated objective was to make it harder for fossil fuel companies to raise money, and the objective was to leave hydrocarbons in the ground. Is that no longer that won't they won't cop to that anymore? Uh, well, certainly they are trying to demin uh, uh, to minimize the kind of death by a thousand cuts they were attempting to do upon fossil fuel, and they certainly were leaning into the. Uh, 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 you should not finance this. By the way, they were contributing to that by not permitting pipelines or permitting uh, drilling leases, et cetera. And so it just became more and more expensive in order to accomplish whatever we wish. But I'll go back to what Mr. Carney was saying earlier. Um, there'll be a transition, but we should, but we need to, but we need to pay attention to the nexus of energy, climate, economy, and national security. And there could be something we could do. You mentioned at the outset my um, uh, Operation Warp Speed. Sure, we're behind the eight ball now, but if we just aligned regulatory agencies and policy, we would be able to improve permitting of renewables, but uh, of carbon capture sequestration, but also of the oil and gas that is needed now to lower prices and to keep um, Europe from freezing, from freezing next winter. Well, if we're involved in a, a all of the above energy policy I don't see how uh, you would try to r ration capital so that it favors one versus the, the other you should be doing all of the above just like we say if we really are going to chew walk and chew gum at the same time you shouldn't you know you, you shouldn't be trying the market ought to dictate the the, the pace and the speed of the transition because a lot of the renewable sources are not ready for prime time yet in terms of pricing. And the only people who are going to hurt are people in uh, lesser developed con uh, countries. They're going to pay more. And you look at what happened in Europe. I don't know how much of, of Putin was emboldened by uh, having uh, Europe and Germany over a barrel, but certainly that played into all of this, Senator. I mean, this is a major... I totally agree with you, but I have a friend who is in fossil fuel, does natural gas exports. And he's, and he's from the Northeast. He said he could not go into his dinner club and and if he mentioned he was in fossil fuel, there was a certain kind of standoffishness that occurred. There's been a social pressure, um, a de classe, if you will, to be involved in fossil. Well, that's great, except now Europe is looking at spending uh, billions of euros more because they are ill prepared for what's going forward, and American right. consumers are paying far higher for gasoline. I will emphasize, though, there is a point of common ground. And last time on our Operation Warp Speed, it's on our website, cassidy.senate.gov backslash reset. We can do more for carbon capture sequestration, blue hydrogen, uh, uh, alternative forms of nuclear, 
and get more oil and gas out for the immediate and intermediate concerns. Do you think that this, I don't know what you called it, it's a zeitgeist, and it, and it, it, it uh, informs all discussions about this. As you said, is that going to change? Would that change if elites were paying $8 a gallon for gas or if people were freezing in Germany in the winter? Would that change? Would, would you hear this? You know, you, same? Go ahead. In your interview with Carney, you brought up the incredibly prescient argument what do we do about weakening political support for transition to newer forms of energy? I've been told that Germans might pay 5,000 to 6,000 euros more next year for the various forms of energy which they purchase. That's you progress. will lose political support. Similarly, in the United States, if people continue to pay four to six dollars for gasoline, you're going to lose political support for. Um, anything that would otherwise be perceived as raising the cost right. of gas. So if you really care about climate, you ought to do something about the economy of the average family here and in Europe. Well, By the way, it does good things for our overall economy, too. We're, That's we're the good. way you continue to support the political, uh, the political aspect of this, without which we cannot proceed. I don't know. Are China and India going to cooperate with, with the, the, the uh, emissions amelioration to the same extent that we're being asked to in, in Europe and in the United States, it, it, it you know, could all be for naught. And so I, I don't know. The whole thing is it's gotten a little bit, the pendulum swung a little bit too far, and I think we're feeling it right now. Senator, I don't know. But maybe I, Operation Warp Speed. We'll, we'll, we'll have you back on to talk about whether that, that goes forward. But certainly natural gas. We've, we've neglected yeah. that to some extent and, and LNG transport. But you got to drill for it to get the natural gas. So. I mean, is it, is it just logic? Is it just rational? Yes. And, and by the way, China will use our natural gas instead of coal, which actually helps global greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, that's also another positive. All right. Thank you, Senator.